And for the record, I'm not fat, I'm fluffy. <laughs> for those of you who still don't know, there are five levels of fatness. Fluffy is one of the levels. There's big, healthy, husky, fluffy, and damn! <laughs> I'm still number four. People go, how do you know when you're number five? Well, because people will tell you, you know? If you try to get on an elevator that's crowded and people stop you and go, uh-uh, <laughs> damn! If you go to Disneyland and little kids want to ride you, I'm sorry, little kids are too honest, man. They're like little alcoholics. You know, and as far as, you know, Disneyland, I love Disneyland, but they're not fluffy friendly. They're not, man. They care about safety, you know? And that sucks, because I could handle one bar. One bar, I'm cool. But now they got the whole, you know. If you're fluffy, one of those is not gonna lock. You're trying. People are in line. You can do it! One time I took a trip with my buddy Mondo, right? Big guy, another big guy. And uh, I went with him because his family, you know, they decided to go and he didn't want to be the only one hanging out by the strollers. <laughs> so we're hanging out and at the end of the day, my buddy Mondo goes, dude, we should get on a ride. I go, which one? They all, we can't get on none of them, dude, we're too big. He goes, there's a ride here at Disneyland. It's called Splash Mountain. I go, what is that? He goes, it's a log and you get inside the log and it goes uphill, goes down, makes a splash. No seatbelt, no pull bar. You just get in and go. I'll go, no seatbelt, no pull bar? <laughs> so we get in line for it, right? We're all pumped up, and I see people getting off the ride with these little note cards. I go, what are those? He goes, oh, they take a photo of you when you go downhill. Oh, okay, cool. So we get to the front of the line, and then we have to deal with the lady with the headset. The lady who takes her job way too serious. Okay, how many people? Four, okay. Two here, two here. How many? Five? Okay, three there, two there. And we get to the front. How many people? <laughs> who cares? We get our own boat, right? We take off. <laughs> We're splishing and splashing like little kids. <laughs> three minutes go by, the moment of truth. We get to the hill, right? <laughs> My buddy Mondo turns around and he says, dude, let's flash the camera. <laughs> I said, you're stupid. I'm down. <laughs> so as soon as it let us go, right? <laughs> we get off the ride, we are soaking wet. <laughs> We're all rosado right here. We got a mean old baby rash. We go to buy the picture, and there's a lady behind the counter with her hand on the screen. And I asked my buddy Mondo, I said, bro, what boat are we? He says, 22. I go, she's covering 22. He goes, oh, we better sneak out of here. Oh, yeah, we're gonna sneak out. <laughs> We get past the picture, girl, but then we get stopped by Disney security. And you have not lived until you've been stopped by a freaky man wearing a badge in the shape of a mouse. <laughs> this guy was like, hold on, hold on a second. Ma'am, move your hand away from the screen. You guys see what I see here? That's a disgrace to this park. We can't believe anyone could take such a photo. My question to you guys. Do you recognize the two big women in this picture? <laughs> and it wasn't until we walked over to this photo that my buddy Armando and I realized something about ourselves. And that is that when two full grown fluffy men are going downhill at a 45 degree angle <laughs> with no shirts on going like this, we both look like sexy bitches. <laughs> I 
I told a story, a story that went viral called the racist gift basket story. The story itself is about 15 minutes long, okay? I'm gonna give you the three minute version of that story so you understand what's going on. Basically, Martin and I are doing a show in Sacramento, California. We're driving from LA to Sacramento. We're passing through a small town called Fresno. As we're passing through Fresno, we reach out to the local promoter who does the shows there. We're good friends with him. And he tells us, you know, because we're trying to have lunch. And he goes, he's busy, but by the way, G. Riley's in town. And we're like, oh shoot, our friend G. Riley's in town. He's at the hotel. All right, he's at the hotel. We knew exactly where he was at. So I say, Martin, how about we go and visit G? Martin goes, let's stop by. I figured first, let's go pick up some soda, some drinks, so we can surprise him. So we get to the market. As soon as we walk in the door, we see a whole pile of gift baskets. Martin goes, we should get him a gift basket. I said, Martin, G. Riley doesn't like gift baskets, okay? He doesn't like the fancy wine and the fancy cheese and the sausage. He definitely hates crackers. <laughs> you don't even know why that's so funny. But anyways, <laughs> I said, how about this, Martin? He doesn't know we're coming. Let's have a little fun with him. How about we make him a racist gift basket? And Martin goes, what's that? I go, you know, Martin, a racist gift basket, a gift basket designed to have fun with whatever race you're trying to mess with. Now in G's case, he's black. It was easy. <laughs> now I say easy not to be an ass. I say easy because there's so many stereotypes attached to African Americans. So we have this empty gift basket. What do we put in it? Fried chicken, watermelon, Kool-Aid, grape soda, barbecued potato chips, sunflower seeds, an ebony magazine, a Chris Rock DVD called Bigger and Blacker, Magnum condoms, Newport cigarettes, a rack of ribs, the recipe for cornbread. We put everything but a white girl with a big ass in the basket. We wrapped it up really nice, we put a big bow on it, and we took it to the hotel. We had the girl at the front desk delivered to his room. Martin and I are waiting in the hallway where he can't see us. So she knocks on the door. G. Riley opens the door, she gives him the gift basket, he says thank you, closes the door. Martin and I run over to the door and we start listening to him opening up the gift basket. As he's opening it, he's getting excited and he is enjoying every single thing he is pulling out of that basket. He is loving this basket until he realizes it's a practical joke. And then he freaks out because he read the greeting card. The greeting card <laughs> freaked him out because now he thinks that the KKK sent the gift basket. <laughs> now some of you are like, why does he think that? Cause that's what we wrote. <laughs> if you're gonna do a practical joke, you go big or you go home is what I'm trying to say. So he freaks out and he tries to run out of the hotel room. As soon as he gets in the hallway, he sees Martin and I laughing and he puts two and two together. So then he cusses us out, he forgives us, gives us a hug, high five, we go back in his room and then I eat his chicken. <laughs> what winds up happening is that story goes crazy on Comedy Central. People are giving him a hard time so they pull it. Next thing you know, I upload it through YouTube. YouTube 10 million views it gets on YouTube. Then they flag it because the word racist is on the title. So it gets pulled off. So then I re-upload it, it gets another 10 million. Then I had people share it. All in all, the video's probably gotten about a little over 100 million views. So here's what happened. Just like the chocolate cakes. <laughs> the diet soda and the deodorant. Before you know it, people started bringing me Mexican racist gift baskets. <laughs> now when it first started happening, listen guys, I'm not gonna lie, it was actually kinda cute because it was only other Mexicans bringing me these quote unquote Mexican racist gift baskets. It started in LA after a show. This one guy walks up to me with a basket and he's like, hey what's up homie? Got you a racist gift basket. I said, we're the same race. Yeah, whatever. All right, whatever. <laughs> I take it backstage and all the items in the basket made it to my house. There was a Mexican blanket with a tiger on it, a bunch of bottles of Fanta, bottles of Sangria, Vicente Fernandez CDs, Mexican candy, pan dulces, sweet bread, mazapanes. Everything made it to my house. Now, the more East Coast we started traveling, 
and the more down south we started performing, the more <laughs> creative <laughs> the gift basket started getting. Fast forward to Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> oh, it gets good. <laughs> Earlier tonight, before we kicked off this special, my friend Martin was out here making a couple of announcements. One of the announcements that he made was, if you brought a gift, please hold on to it until after the show. Don't bring it to the stage. It could interrupt the flow of the performance. The only reason why he makes this announcement every single night is because of one show in Mobile. So here's what happens. I tell the entire racist gift basket story, the full 16 minutes, right? As soon as I finish, a guy from the back of the theater rushes the front of the stage. Now keep in mind, this area is full. In Mobile, the aisle was right up the middle. So the guy had a clean shot to me. He hauled ass like it was the prize is right, all the way down. <laughs> Much like tonight, there was security there that night. Security sees the guy with the basket, but no one thought to stop him. All they did was, that's pretty. Oh, that's nice, that's pretty, yeah. So the guy makes it all the way to the front. He takes the gift basket and he puts it on the stage. Now he's heckling me from where you're sitting. I'm standing here and he's like, Fluffy! What's up, dude? I got this for you. Thank you. Open it. I go, sir, we're kind of in the middle of a show right now. I says, I appreciate the gift. That's very nice of you. I says, but uh, how about this? I'll, I'll open it after the show. Oh, come on, Fluffy. I want to see your face. Um, sir, how about this? How about you take the gift basket and you bring it over here to the side of the stage where security's at and I'll have security escort you behind the curtain and then I'll open it up backstage with you in front of me. How's that? And he's not taking no for an answer. Now the problem is the crowd just saw me tell the racist gift basket story and all of a sudden there's a guy with a gift basket. They have no idea I'm not affiliated with freaking Duck Dynasty in the front row. <laughs> So now I'm trying to defuse the situation before it gets crazy, but he's not taking no for an answer. Next thing you know, he does something no other audience member has ever done in my 19 plus years as a comedian. He takes the whole crowd away from me, flips them, and then uses them on me in five seconds. It was the most amazing, horrific thing I have ever witnessed. <laughs> this is all he did. Come on, Fluffy! We want to see your face! We want to see your face. We want to see your... He gets 2,000 people behind him to start chanting, We want to see your face. We want to see your face. It was very evident. This was not the first rally he's ever led. <laughs> the crowd is so loud, I can no longer hear myself over the monitor. So I'm like, I lost. So I get on my hands and knees. I put the microphone down. I grab the gift basket and I start tearing it open. I reach in. Forget about pulling out Mexican soda, Mexican candy, or a Mexican blanket. This dude was a pro. <laughs> I started pulling out gardening tools. <laughs> I'm pulling out a rake, a toy shovel, a toy leaf blower. Dig deeper, flap it, dig deeper. I pull out a soccer ball. I go, dude, it says Puerto Rico. They ran out of Mexico. <laughs> I pull out a brick. I go, what's the brick for? The wall. <laughs> I pull out an actual application for U.S. citizenship. <laughs> I said, there's no way this can get any worse. Dig deeper. I was wrong. <laughs> I pull out an old school box of Crayola crayons. You know the 64 pack that has a sharpener in the back? Okay. There's a window on the front of the crayon so you can see all of the colors that are in the box. All of the crayons in the box are brown except for one white crayon right in the middle. And I said, what the hell is that supposed to mean? And he looks at me and he says, welcome to my world. Uh, sometimes I use my voices for evil, man. I won't lie. If I don't have my way, like when I go to drive throughs and they screw up my order, oh, I'm evil. <laughs> I go back around and I start ordering, but I throw them off by doing this, right? They'll come on the speaker. I got a fantastic burger. How can I help you? And I'll do this. Hello, sir. <laughs> can I please have a double 
cheeseburger, not a fries, and a shake. Burgers, <laughs> no cheeseburger, not a fries, and a shake. Oh my God, yes. Thank you for looking to the window. And I pull up. Oh, they're not expecting me. Oh, the look on their face is the best, right? Did you just order? <laughs> they come back with a bag of food, you know. Um, would you like ketchup? That's where I let them have it. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, I know I have a habit in my shows of sometimes throwing a little Spanish in there. If you don't understand Spanish, I do apologize, okay? I promise I will be translating. I don't want anybody freaking out or reporting me to the management with concerns or issues, you know? What the hell is going on in there? What kind of show is this? No, somebody better hit the SAP button on that some bitch real quick. I didn't pay good money to hear some Samoan speak Spanish. I'm not Samoan, I'm... Fluffy. <laughs> I didn't know why the guy thought I was Samoan, you know? And I've had this happen a couple times where people go, are you Hawaiian? I'm like, no. No, not just a shirt. I thought it was just a shirt, but no. How could it just be a shirt? Just because you wear a freaking sombrero, that doesn't make you Mexican. <laughs> I see white people think of the mind wearing a sarape, walking a donkey with a sombrero. You don't look at him and go, hola, amigo. No, you're like, hey, Ted, hi. <laughs> And he's walking around, hola, come on, come on, stupid donkey, donkey, come on. <laughs> I don't get it, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to do my own thing. But it's funny, though. I didn't know why the guy thought I was Hawaiian until I actually went to Hawaii. I found out that Hawaiian people actually look like swollen Mexicans. <laughs> they do. I got off the plane. I looked around. I was like, oh, my God, my family. Even they were like, aloha, brother, lo que le, malo, malo. <laughs> Orale. I loved Hawaii. Hawaii was great, man. They have a lot of different cultures there. They have a lot of Asian people. A lot, a lot of Koreans. I know this because I got a couple of shirts tailored at some places, and every time I'd go in, it was always a Korean lady, an older Korean lady who was me. I'd walk in and this one lady always had a comment to make. I'm there for a week and every day she had a different comment. I walk in one day and I couldn't say anything either because she was 75 years old. I can't say nothing back, you know, but there I am walking in. The lady behind the counter, oh, oh, look at who's here. Look at who's here. Oh, shit, we're gonna work hard today. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Make fun of me. 